Joel, this is an exciting step forward in the electric car universe, I think. Because yeah, that's the big thing. So I've always known this figure. I remember hearing it years ago from a government minister that 40% of UK households don't have anywhere off the street to park cars. Mm -hmm. Which I've always said, well, 60% do, so they've got no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but then how do, so the next step is can, how do we use those chargers more effectively? Because I've got two chargers at home, which I do use, but actually in the, not that much. <laughs> so is there, is that's what you've come up with, co-chargers seems to be a bit of a, an answer to that. It is, and we, we've seen um, and still see uh, charger sharing apps for destination charging. So yeah. I've been signed up for uh, Zap Home and Plug Share and Book My Charge, great apps for that. And we're using it to address the problem of getting people into EVs in the first place. Right. So it's very much around uh, community charging, um, and it's about someone, somebody with a charge point sharing it with a handful of neighbours so that those neighbours can ditch the diesel and go and buy an EV in the first place. Right. Which, for now, I think is the more important thing. Yeah. You know, um, as EV owners, we are a little self-obsessed. Yes. But sometimes it's nice to realise, you know what, it's not about us. Yeah. We, we, we're not the problem anymore. It's, it's Joe Public yeah. who's sitting there who's feeling, you know what, I need to make this switch. They're probably nervous about it. Yeah. And we know the biggest blocker for a lot of people is if they can't charge dependably and uh, conveniently, which basically means while you sleep, yeah. uh, and affordably, they're not going to make the leap. Yeah. So co-charge is there to enable those people to, and there's over 10 million of them. Right. That's a lot of cars, that's a lot of CO2, that's yeah. a lot of fumes to get them over into EVs soon. Right. And for the people with charges to get, to make some money from it. You right, because that's the money. Th Yeah, because I mean, there's, there's a few people in the village I live in who've now got electric cars who, when they first got them, could either charge it off a three pin plug in there, yeah. coming out of their kitchen. They now have chargers installed. But before they did that, so quite a few of them did charge at my house, which I was fine with. I knew them well, they'd bring their cars around, yeah. they plug but I did pay for the electricity. So that is the, yeah. that is the, 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 the switch that you've got. So what, how does that work? So someone comes to my house, plugs into my charger. Yeah, it, it, even before then, it's somebody, say you've got somebody who lives in a terrace and um, they're an ethically minded person. Um, and probably the, one of the last things after doing their recycling everything, they've still got a, I don't know, a diesel car sat outside and they probably hate it. They're aware of the damage that's doing. but. If they haven't got a means of charging at home, they're still blocked from owning it. So that person signs up as a chargee and says where they live, and they can immediately see what hosts there are in their locality. The host will set up a host account and say, right. I live here, I've got this sort of charger. Yes, you can charge overnight or you can't, and this sort of thing. Do you need to be in attendance? Various settings you can do. And um, the app notifies people, there's a host in your area, and they can make a booking or a booking request, right. and the host is very much in control, can right. accept or reject that. And most of the bookings are recurring, because most people, as you know, they'll charge yeah. about once a week. Yeah. So it might be, I don't know, Trevor from number 26 books every Tuesday night from six in the evening when he gets home from work to eight in the morning when he goes off to work again. Right. He'll drop the car off, plug it in, start the session, and then go home, go to sleep, right. come back, unplug it and drive off. And the app does all the maths, works out, okay, how long was that charger going for? Right. And deals with the money, payments automatic, so, you, so as a, as a charge, what am I, well, if I've got the charger, what am I, a charge? No, I'm You're a, a host. I'm a host, sorry. So as a host then, I would, I would have my app, the, the app would be linked to my bank account. So they That's would right. pay, so the chargee would pay for that electricity. It would come through right. to me. And very importantly, it's not so much selling electricity. This is something that people are starting to get their heads around now. In, in reverse order, the, the cost of charging a car, number one is the tarmac that it's sat on. That's yeah. the expensive bit. Yeah. Then the charger and then the electricity. So it's very much about renting your charger. You've paid for that charger, 700 yeah. quid or whatever it yeah. was. And it's a way of getting that back for the other 95% when it's not that. And you can right. make several hundred pounds, you can make over a thousand pounds a year doing this. It's oh, quite wow. oh, I see. So you're not, it's not just covering the cost of the electricity. No. It's... Well, because you're reusing that expensive bit. Yeah. So the charger is still getting very cheap charging. They right. haven't had to fork out for a charger, but they're still only paying probably under 500 pounds a year to run their car. Right. But the host is getting some money back on their charger. Right. It's one of those everyone wins things. Yeah. So it, it works really well for everybody. Because I mean, yes, that's the, that, that, is there a price differential between, say, a destination charger that you would pay 
I don't know what, 25 pence a kilo hour or something, you know, whatever, even though the cheaper yeah. ones, you're still paying above, generally paying above the odds to what you would yeah. get from the grid. Yeah. So is it going to be cheaper for someone who, to use a, a home, someone else's home charger than using one of those? Yeah, the average at the moment isn't a lot cheaper than that. Um, the difference is if you're paying, say, your 25, even if you're lucky, right, to get one at 25p and not 69 or yes, whatever or you can the, pay. The rapid charge um, is much The difference is you can't go home to bed. Yeah, using yeah. those. So you're getting all the advantages of charging while at home yeah. without charging at home, yeah. if you sort what I mean. That's yeah. the key difference there. And um, yeah, I mean, what we're saying to people is, look, if, if you've got a charger and you're interested in accelerating the transition to EVs, yeah. just sign up for CoCharger, sign up for all the apps, yeah. all the charger sharing apps, do your bit, it's very easy. We've got, we're coming up on 400 hosts already. We've only right. just started promoting right. this in a lockdown. So we're doing quite well. We've yeah. got over a thousand users coming up on 400 hosts. And the word we get every time is easy. Right. They say, oh, well, you know, our sign up tend to be the people to t- dip a toe in. Yeah. But they've dipped the toe in and the first thing they always get back is, oh, it's brilliant, it just works. Right. You know, I wave at them through the window yeah, and the next thing I know, I've got nine quid in my bank account. Wow. Because of course you don't need. Because I'm, ass- I'm sort of assuming there's that sort of invasion of privacy that someone's coming to your house to plug into your thing, and actually you don't even need to be there. You don't need to welcome them or do anything. I mean, it's they, no more than the, the postman turning up, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's people have said it's very easy, very simple, and they like the fact that as EV owners, we're, we never shut up about being EV owners. Let's yeah. be honest. And you're enabling a neighbour to, to have that. Yes. You know, someone who, to, who now owns an EV probably never shuts up about how wonderful it is, and that's because yeah. of you. Yeah. So you're helping your neighbourhood, you're clearing the place up, you're not walking out on the cold morning to all these cars running and pubes yeah. coming out, and that's because of you. So yeah. we're just saying to everybody, if you've got a charger mm. and you have got space yeah. to rent it out, a lot yeah. of people, you know, if you can't have somewhere to put your car, then it, obviously it might yeah. not be for you. But there was a really good paper by a company called Dodona Analytics a couple of weeks ago, and that worked out that even the most optimistic levels of building public chargers, which is pretty impressive, I mean, yeah. behind the scenes, there's great things going on there. It's still going to fall way short, and it will become a break on the transition. Yeah. We only need 4% of home and workplace chargers to be shared, and it plugs the back gap completely. Wow, I see. So it's not, yeah, so it's not. It's, yeah. right. So one in 25 chargers will do the job. Yeah. And it will then also help the public chargers because that's more EVs on the road. Yeah. yeah. So it works for everybody except <coughs> fossil fuel people. Yes. It works beautifully. <laughs> so, yeah, we're very excited about it. It's had great support, great take up, lots of interest. Um, you know you're doing something right when the government, the automotive industry and um, ecological groups all like you at once. Wow, yeah. That doesn't that's happen. A, that's an unusual yeah. trilogy of, so, of people. Yeah, yeah. very exciting stuff. Because uh, I mean, I'm just sort of th- thinking through it, so that you need, you do need, a, uh, in a sense, you know, my, now my house isn't going to be any good because it's in a tiny village and there's not many people there. But if if uh, if I have the same amount of parking space as I have in a town, mm. there's going to be quite a lot of people within I don't know what a kilometre of where I live that could make use of it, and that's, that's really right. the that's the key thing, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, and. That, it, yeah, we, we work on a sort of five minute walk basis. Yeah. And uh, as we approach a thousand hosts, that means most people will have a host nearby. Right. Um, also, there is a commercial version of this. Quite often, so if I walk around uh, Plymouth, fairly near to me, you can walk for an hour and not see a driveway. Right. Beautiful townhouses, but right. no driveways. Um, but at the end of some of those rows of terraces, there might be a private dentist or a, or right. a community centre, and they've got a car park. So yeah. we've got people putting charges into those and setting them up as community charge points right. for when out of hours, that's seven people along that road who can ditch their diesels and buy EVs. Right. Knowing that they've got their weekly yeah, charge. They, got, they can go there. And also, I mean, the key thing there is, you know, if you inst- for a commercial company to install a commercial, you know, s- yeah. low speed charger is quite expensive. To put in a, basically, you just need the dumbest of dumb seven kilowatt yeah. sockets. It's no yeah. big deal, is just it? Just a good a- quality home one. There's no groundworks. Yeah. No. It's just, you just put it in. And also, we're working with a number of local authorities because for them, you know, they're used to spending absolute minimum six grand right. to put a charger yes. in. And we're saying to them, no, do spend that money. You're going to need those. Keep going with the public charges. Right. Do not slow down. But for six grand, Maybe you could put 12 community charges in. Yeah. And they're there in, what, two weeks. They're yes. up and running. Those businesses and individuals are making some money from it. Yeah. Very timely for that as well. 
it's just one of those win-win things, and it's very important that it's, it's not an instead of. This is an additional thing to the public right. charger infrastructure. It right. doesn't replace it in any way. Because I mean, I'm a bit confused then about, say, you've got you're a dentist and you've got a small car park with four cars, and in the night time, no one's parked there That's because right. it's it's a daytime, so you don't. But you and you've got four chargers there. Do you? Does the app? deal with that entire thing? I mean, how does, the, how does the app know how much electricity is being used by those four cars? You know, it, it, it took a, a lot of R&D to come up with something incredibly crude. We tried all these sophisticated models and we've got <laughs> analysts on it and all the rest of it. At the end of the day, we know the speed of the charger. Right. And this isn't perfect, right. but you know what, it's been easily close enough. Yeah. Um, speed of the charger, you know the car, because yeah. a charger registers, you know, I've got 52 kilowatt hour battery. Right. And when you start the, the, the app reminds you, you'll go to John's house, it's your charge night yeah. tonight, and you'll tap on, it'll come up with the booking that you've got, right, start that session. First thing you do is you take a photograph of your dash to prove what your battery percentage right. is, and you put in 26%. Right. And the rest of it's just very straightforward yeah. maths. So it deliberately doesn't talk even to the charger. Right, so it's super, yeah. super kind of, in that, yeah. that sense, disconnected, but also makes yeah. it much simpler. So yeah. in the future, this year, our roadmap includes things like tapping into the chargers and into various EV tariffs yeah. and all the rest of it to facilitate smart charging, even vehicle to grid, right. all those compatibilities are yeah. very much part of that environment. Um, but for now, it's just as simple as it can be. Right, yeah. As the whole point of it is yeah. just, you can put in the most basic charger and it will just work. And then, do you, as, as, a, as the, the conduit for all this, do you, do you get a cut of the, yeah. of the money? Right. So we don't take anything for the app. There's no contracts, there's no commitment. But at the end of each session, as soon as the host, the host gets their numbers, look, this is what happened, right. and gives them the numbers, and as long as they approve that, they can query it. Nobody's yet queried one, right. it's all been fine. But they hit approve that, it immediately takes payment from the chargee. Right. 12% comes off it, which goes to us to run the scheme. Right. And then the remainder gets paid to the host, I think it's every two weeks. Right. So it's really simple. Yeah. And we don't make money until somebody stops putting fuel in a car and starts putting in electricity in a car instead. So right. there's a sort yeah. of beauty to it. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's some poetry to it. I think yeah. <laughs> the nice thing for me is if you're going to be a host, what you're doing is taking the money that some of your neighbours are currently giving to fossil fuels yes. and channeling it through your renewable energy supply. Yeah. Yeah. There's a beauty to yes. that for me yeah. so yeah it's um it's, it's 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 going down very well the feedback has been universally positive it's, brilliant it's a lovely brilliant. thing that's really good so pe people can find out more by going to because it the correct one <laughs> yes um www.co-charger.com very nice very simple thank you joel very much brilliant thank you. stuff